Good day, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Sister Jay here. Um, today, I would like to talk about a topic that some or a lot of people might find controversial, but it's been on my heart. And if you've seen the title, you already know what I'm going to talk about. And uh, if you're not a believer, if you're not a Christian, then uh, this doesn't apply to you. You can easily just ignore this. Um, you don't hold yourself to the standards, but if you're a believer, it applies to you. And I might even add, even if you're not a believer, if you listen to this word without any preconceived opinions, it could also or should also apply to you. And if you have seen the topic, then you know what I'm getting ready to talk about. And I've titled this word, this message, this topic, discussion, Stop Telling Young Christian Men That Sex Is a Need. Stop Telling Young Christian Men That Sex Is a Need. There's so many subtle dangers in telling young Christian men or any men of whatever different ages alike that sex is a need. So many subtle dangers in doing that. And I would just like to just talk about it as, as the Holy Spirit put it on my heart. Right? Let's define a need. What's a need? A need is something that a person cannot live without. And... Can we just run down a few list of what a need is? Water is a need because without water, you can die. Food is a need because without food, one can die. Shelter, a place to live is a need because without shelter, someone can die. Jesus Christ for a believer is a need for anyone actually because without Jesus, we would not only die a physical death, but even a spiritual eternal death. So let's just give that basic definition that a need is something that one cannot do without or live without. There's a dimension or a name of God called El Shaddai, right? This is a dimension of God that is all sufficient that provides for us. And when we all come into this world, we come into this world with all things being equal. Of course, I know that the exception to this rules, having what we need. When a baby comes into this world, it's implanted into his mother already with the uh, tools for him to be fed, right? So God provides food and water and shelter. Again, I'm saying with all things being equal. I know there are people that come from certain parts or regions of the world where they don't have these basic needs. But these are things that in a regular normal setting people have because they cannot do without it. And without these things, they would indeed die. So God is so loving. He provides this need because he's intentional, he's good. And I don't want to think that God will ever deprive us of our needs. That's the reason why when a baby comes into this world, those needs are met. And uh, sex is not one of them. I've heard so many times where older women tell younger women that, you know what, sex is a man's need. And uh, they give all kinds of advice if you don't do it, another woman will. And there's this fear that they put in the hearts of women to think that uh, they are in a man's life to fulfill this need. I know the Bible says in the book of Genesis that it's not good for man to be alone. And God created a helper comparable unto him, Isaac and Nedo, or Eve for Adam. And one of these things that God created Eve to fulfill is sexual intimacy that's one of that because it takes two to have sexual intimacy however i do not believe and the lord does not believe that sex is a need at best sex is a desire and it's a want that should be fulfilled for a christian person in the covenant of marriage again sex is at best a desire and a want that should be fulfilled in a Christian covenant marriage, yeah, it should be fulfilled. With all things being equal, sex is a desire or a want that should be fulfilled in the covenant of marriage for a Christian couple. Telling a young man or telling someone that sex is a need is to put this rhetoric or this idea at the back of their mind that there's something that they're lacking. That is something that they're living without. That is something that God is withholding from them. It's a need. It almost puts a, 
a, a pursuit in their heart where they cannot wait to get this need. So are we saying that God has deprived a young man of this need in the years that he has to wait before he gets married? Because if it was a need, then he should have died. Because he didn't come into this world with this need being fulfilled. He lived all the way to teenage age. He had to wait until he was at a ripe, right age to get married before he engaged in this in, in a perfect setting. So he was deprived of this need. How did he leave without this need? Okay, it's a dangerous idea to put in the minds of men, young men or whatever men of whatever age, because then they start to pursue women at the back of their head that they have to have this need fulfilled. I need this. This is, this is my need. One of the subtle dangers of putting this idea in the heart and in the minds of a man or young man or whatever man that sex is a need is that when he's choosing a partner, a life partner or spouse, he begins to choose based off of this thing that he perceives as a need, right? I have to, you know, test, I have to test the waters. I have to choose a life partner based on the capabilities of fulfilling this need. For a believer, we are supposed to go into courtship, a non-sexual courtship with a man or a woman, almost interviewing them to see if our morals and our values align, to see if we're going to get married without actually engaging in sexual intimacy. So if this was such a need, why is it that it is a sin for us to engage in sex out of marriage? Why is it that there's not something that we're supposed to or under the covenant under the covenant of God allowed to explore whilst we are trying to to pick a spouse? Why are we not supposed to do it? Why is it a sin? Why is fornication a sin if sex is so much of a need? we we'll put this idea in the hearts of men and that fear is also perpetrated into the hearts of women where a young woman thinks that she is less than because she's not able to fulfill this need in the life of the man. She's forced to either go against her moral standing, engage in premarital sex because she has to fulfill this need. Or at best, she comes into a marriage with a man and she feels like this is a need as opposed to it being a desire and a want that should be fulfilled for both parties in the covenant of marriage, she feels like she's this tool that, sh that must fulfill this need. It's a need. He needs it. And if I don't do it, another woman would, would because that's, what, that's the advice that goes around. You better give your man all the sex because another woman will. To the extent that even when life begins to happen, she feels less than if she cannot perform this need. If sex is a need, and if you come into this mindset that sex is a need, and even if you bring this mindset into marriage, what happens if something happens to your spouse where she cannot perform this need? What happens when your wife is pregnant? What happens when she's going to postpartum, and by the doctor's orders, she, she can have sexual encounters with you during, what, for the first, what, six weeks or eight weeks or sometimes even longer? after pregnancy what happens in those seasons what happens if an accident happens where your wife physically cannot perform these duties what happens does the marriage end let's flip the switch or flip the the roles what if it happened to you as the man and now you can no longer do that with your wife does the marriage end because sex is a need again a need is something that you cannot live without what happens when life happens and there's an accident and you're no longer able to engage in sexual intimacy because it's a need then the spouse has the right to step out of the marriage to cheat because when people come with that mindset that sex is a need if unfavorable events happen in a marriage that causes one spouse not to be able to perform then they think that they have a license and a right to step out in infidelity because sex is supposed to be a man's need we see the dangers in that the the mindset that perpetrates even people to to go and and sexually assault people take it by force because it's a need it's an animalistic nature that cannot be tamed or controlled god created men to need sex who said that if god created men to need sex why was adam created in 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 the perfect garden of eden without woman we don't know. Bible, the scriptures do not tell us how long Adam stayed in the state of being in the garden without a wife. God gave Adam 
handwork. God gave him a garden to tend to. God gave him his presence. But the last thing that God gave Adam was a woman. So if sex was such a need, I want to believe that an intelligent God full of wisdom and integrity and love and compassion would have given Adam a wife right away. He wouldn't have had to wait even one second without her because it's an uncontrollable animalistic need that a man must have. You see the dangers in that because this is what perpetuates someone to want to take advantage of a woman, to want to, 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 to sexually assault someone because they feel like it's a need. You can't say no to me. I have this need. It has to be fulfilled. And if I have to force myself on you to get it, then that's what I'm going to do. We see the dangers in that. This perpetuates premarital sex. This perpetuates having children out of wedlock. This perpetuates having children with multiple people because it's such a need and I have to have it against morality, against consequences. It's a need because someone has planted this idea in my head that sex is a need. I understand the, I have a balanced view on sexual intimacy, that it is a desire that should be fulfilled in a covenant of marriage. And I'm not saying that a woman has a right to weaponize sex or deliberately withhold it in a marriage. But if you come into marriage as a young man thinking that sex is a need, what happens when your wife cannot perform because of an accident, because of pregnancy, because of unfortunate events, or what happens when you cannot perform that so-called need? It's not food, it's not water, it's not shelter. And if it were a need, then from the day that you were born, the Lord would have created an avenue for that need to be fulfilled in the life of a male child or, or baby. And uh, we see even in scripture where there was a, um, a man called Amnon, and this was uh, King David's eldest son who was going to be heir to the throne who desired this evil desire in his heart where he looked upon lustfully his sister, his half-sister Tamar, and he wanted her. He conceived this idea in his heart for her. And he had this wicked friend who didn't discourage him, who probably told him that this is your need and it's your right to have it, and gave him a twisted eye, uh, uh, advice on how he could accomplish this need to pretend that he was sick and summon his sister to take care of him. And he, he accepted this advice and he, he followed through with it and he ended up sexually assaulting his sister, Tamar. This is, again, one of the dangers of putting it in the mind of a young man that sex is a need that they're missing out on something in the years where they're supposed to wait. Again, a young Christian man who believes in the word of God. This is one of the dangers where a man is willing to commit incest with his sister because he has this desire that nobody told him or advised him that your desires are perfectly normal, but it's not a need. At best, it's a desire and it's a want that you can wait on. You can obtain the grace of God to wait on and, and get into a marriage, not for the purpose of fulfilling this deed, but for the purpose that God created marriage. Again, let us stop telling young men or young women that sex is a need and never tell a young woman that if you don't do it, another woman will, because there's never a justification for infidelity under God ever. At best, let them know that sex is a desire and a want for a Christian couple to fulfill in the covenant of marriage the right way. Let's have a balanced view of what God has created so that abuse will not be the order of the day. Again, my name is Sister J. I'm your sister in Christ, and I love you with the pure love of Jesus Christ. Take care and stay blessed.